Today we're brewing a Brut IPA. It's an experimental IPA style. The finding characteristic is that it is bone dry. The dryness is attributed to a low final gravity, which we're gonna achieve through using enzymes. So there are several enzymes you can use. We picked up some bean assist from the local health food store, which contains alpha galactose. This stuff is similar to Beano, which is often used by home brewers. It has the same ingredient. The enzymes break down starch in the wort, which allows the yeast to eat more of it, meaning that the final product will attenuate higher and have an, a higher ABV. And a lower final gravity. So we need 7.8? Yeah. All right, good. Brut is actually a term applied to champagne and sparkling wines. It just means it's a very dry version of sparkling wine. That's where the Brut IPA gets its name. It yeah. has nothing to do with um, Brut, the aftershave. <laughs> Emmett actually used Brut once when he was seven years old, the first time he shaved. And he's never shaved again since then. He was scarred for life. He, <laughs> he had a full beard by the time he was eight. Pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty simple grain bill. We're just using uh, Pilsner, some flaked rice, and some flaked corn. And this will basically ferment down pretty dry on its own. We're also mashing at 145 degrees which means that alpha amylase will be more active during the mash. Again, this is going to break the starch down further, making it easier for the yeast to eat. This whole thing's making me tingle. All right, you ready to work some magic? Just in time, man. Yeah, that was close. 100% uh, of power. Super vigorous. 240, yeah. 5,500 5, watts, my friend. Uh, so I knocked it down to about 40. All right, guys, we've been getting a lot of questions about pH. Uh, we do test and we do adjust uh, certain times. Uh, we thought we were good on this one. We didn't do any adjustments. I did take a sample about 10 to 15 minutes into the mash and we just checked the pH on it. A little bit too late, we're already in our boil. Um, our pH is definitely high. We're around 5.6, 5.65, which is definitely on the high side. This is a beer that we probably should have paid more attention to because it's an extremely important style to get into that pH range between 5.2 and 5.5. And mainly just so you get your optimal starch conversion because you want this thing to be as fermentable as possible. So the we will fix our errors, guys. Stop, stop yelling at me. All right, we've been recirculating through the plate chiller for 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the element and then turn the cooling water on and we're gonna cool the kettle down to about 170 and the pump is on and it's gonna continue to recirculate. So when the PID on the controller reads around 180, I'm gonna turn the cooling water off. Um, I found that it continues to cool for a little bit, so 180 is kind of a good benchmark for us. All right. We're gonna get ready for our hop addition. And we're just gonna weigh out three ounces. A little overzealous. 
3.03, I'll take it. And then we did not have our hot basket in the boiling kettle, so I went ahead and uh, had this soaking in some star sand. We're using Huel melon hops. Add these to the kettle at 170, and we're gonna let them kind of hang out while we are recirculating with our hose. What I like to do is just put the hose right behind the hop basket, just hold it there, and then you get a nice little whirlpool action. The hops have been hanging out for 20 minutes. Kyle's gonna turn the cooling water on and we're gonna chill it down to pitching temp. We're using WLP001, and we're gonna shoot for around 68 degrees. All right, suppose we can cut that water. Got my sanitized fermenter. Healthy stream right there. It is. Came out a little more, a little more healthy than I was expecting. It's got like a musky, yeah. melony smell yeah, for sure. It does. Yeah, it's not. I wouldn't call it citrusy by any means. No, it's uh, kind of strange. It's, it's musky. Musky. Yeah. Mu musky. Yeah, maybe it's like musk melon. That's it. Whatever that is. Uh, five gallons. Yeah, five and a half, which is five, little, five and a quarter. Yeah, five and a quarter. Dialing in the two forty boil off rate still. Wow. So yeastage. Yeastage. All right. Basically, you want to use a neutral L yeast for the style. So we're using the California L yeast WLP 001. So according to the packet, between 1050 1065, two of these guys. If you don't make a starter. So we're gonna use two of them, and they've been warming up while we've been brewing. And then I always just like to hit them with a little bit of star sand, as well as my scissors. And then I'm gonna try a trick somebody posted in our YouTube comments, where you open this packet and pull the inner packet out. The old double cut. And then you can actually see what you're cutting. And sanitize that too, or? May, may as well. It's been in the uh, other packet, but. But this way you can actually see what you're cutting. Too. I don't know. Hey, thanks, random we'll, dude. We'll look it up. We'll, have, we'll look it up and put his yeah, name up there. So a question I had was um, when we were researching the spirits, why wouldn't you just use um, wine yeast or a champagne yeast? Apparently the answer to that is when yeast attenuates very well, it eats up a lot of the things that contribute flavor to the beer. Yeah, but so, I mean, if this is gonna ferment close to zero too, well, Maybe it yeah. just doesn't doesn't take well, away the flavor, or I don't know. It's, it's that's new, my question. Yeah, I guess that's my question. Yeah, Why wouldn't know. you just use a you know just like a straight up? But I, from what I understand, it's because you we should still get some flavor because it's a neutral yeast. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm but, not a doctor. Hey, somebody, if you know the answer to this, please. Yeah. Why Tell wouldn't us. you just use a distiller yeast? <laughs> or, you know, right. Yeah. Something that's. Yeast. Right. Something that's got the enzymes already in it. So we got the yeast in there. Um, I'm gonna add a little yeast nutrient. All kinds of stuff's going in here. Well, I'll let you do that for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, we could just throw the whole pill in there. Will it dissolve? Probably. I mean, I mean it dissolves in your stomach, right? Yeah. Is it the acids? I don't yeah. know. I don't know, that I don't know. I'll just keep opening it. I started down this road. <laughs> Should we lit it? Yeah. You want to shake it? Sure. You're stronger. That's goddamn right I am. <laughs> Some fine shaking. 60 seconds. And gravity? Is that what we're doing? Alright. So let's see what our starting gravity is. I'm gonna call that 1058. Overall, pretty smooth. Not gonna say no spills. I did or, notice there was like a tiny little spill. Yeah. We were taking the hose off. Is that, oh, oh is it going with a shot that it just over? But I'm excited. Excited to see how this comes out. See how dry it gets with those enzymes. Tasty time. 
Yeah, our bean assist enzymes don't appear to have assisted much. They didn't assist at all. Because we go to 1010 regardless. Kind of a yellowy orange? Yeah. Hey? Hey to orange? It's I don't a, know. It's a sunny hay. So, it's like, it's sweet. I mean, it's a really good IPA. Mm -hmm. That's really it's good. It's an excellent IPA. But not like a really a brute IPA. No, nah, not at all. No. It didn't ferment down to zero or even close, close to it. No. But there is some dryness. Like oh, it's, it's not a dry beer in terms of not having a sugar in it, but it has a dry mouthfeel. You know, like you drink it and it's like it makes your tongue all gritty. Yeah. It does have that going for it. It's really interesting. I feel like on the front, it's super velvety almost. Um, creamy, if yeah. you will, mm -hmm. but then it dries out. Yeah, it's not cloying. Yeah, you swallow it, and then it's, it's, it's real, which I like. It has a really dry mouthfeel finish to it. I think but it's I, got a ton of hop aroma. This is a beer with some fruity hops, mm -hmm. sort of They're like a weird fruity hop. Huel it's melon. a different hop. So if you're into fruity hop beers and you haven't tried the Huel melon, you should give this beer a try. I don't even necessarily call it like fruity fruity. Just like on the very- no, I wouldn't say like citrusy. Fruity, fruity, yeah, fruity Not citrusy. I guess. Not citrusy yeah. at all. Melony would be good. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had it straight as the only hop. Yeah. And uh, it has a different flavor profile. Right. It's really nice. Yeah, this is, I think, becoming one of my favorites. We're gonna brew this again. Yeah. We're gonna use this stuff, which is White Labs Ultra Firm, Ultra Firm, and it's got a check mark, so we know it's Ultra Firm. <laughs> so we're gonna give this a shot. This is kind of what everybody says to use. We're trying right. to use something you could easily just pick up. Right. And the reason we use that is because we couldn't find this locally. We ended up having to order this online. So, but I would say, regardless of the experiment, maybe you don't even throw any of the bean assistant and the brew it as an IPA because mm -hmm. it's. Yeah. Really, really good. In terms of a brute IPA, fail. Right, yeah. In terms of a delicious IPA, yeah. I'd say success. success for sure. Yeah, so we failed successfully. Hey, one note, Thanksgiving is like tomorrow. Is it? Two day? What day is today? Well, when this oh, video yeah. gets published. Yes, today. Um, Thanksgiving Thursday. And that's like yeah. the time of year when like people unnecessarily buy a bunch of stuff. They don't need. That they need or maybe don't need. <laughs> if you're looking to buy some stuff, that um, you don't necessarily need, but you might want. We've got a couple options for you here. Some spice kits, we sell brew kits, we sell distillation uh, systems. You know, we got a little bit of everything. This guy, perfect for the holidays. Make up a couple jars, bring it to the in-laws, makes things better. True story. We make a little bit of money um, through the Google ads with these videos, but like it doesn't even come close to covering the cost of making the videos. Um, so how we cover those costs is by um, offering stuff like this in our brew system. So it really helps us out uh, when you pick that stuff up. So just check it out. Uh, website, clawhammersupply.com. Yeah, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, info, clawhammersupply, give us a phone call. Happy to answer questions, sell you some stuff. Cheers, man. Yeah, cheers. Good uh, recipe. Yeah, I think that worked out well. Minus what we were shooting for. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, it's kind of the, I don't know, that's kind of why I like homebrewing. 